Congratulations! You've made it through the first video and at this stage you've successfully removed the boiler shell from the engine chassis of your steam engine. So in this video we will now delve into something called a reverse unit. The reverse unit allows this, the motor in your steam engine to go forward or backwards. Reverse units were made in different types of arrangements and are found in different parts of the Gilbert steam engine depending on what year uh, the engine was made. Today we'll be focusing once again on our 1946 300 and as such we will find that the reverse unit is mounted in the front underneath the boiler uh, in front of the engine. So without further delay let's get started on surfacing a reverse unit. All right, I think our bulb is probably burned out, but uh, I will verify that. Um, but again, uh, this is an early version. You can see the cloth covered wire. Um, there's been no repairs done to this engine, um, hence the or wire replace. So the, still have the cloth covered, which is, is pretty neat. Um, and what I'm going to do in a little bit is I'm going to actually take this whole assembly loose, this uh, reverse unit. And um, I want to inspect it and clean it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, like I mentioned, is let's go ahead and remove this screw. And um, this particular way of attaching a reversing unit did change a little bit over the years, even within um, the engines where the reverse unit was mounted here uh, above the drivers. Um, I know in the circus engine that I did, uh, the way they had the screws and stuff back here is a little different than you see on this particular uh, variation. All right. Now, this is this is interesting. I've not taken one of these apart before, so I'm learning uh, with the rest of you. Um, the bracket here for the headlamp is, uh, is affixed to the body, so that's not going to come loose. Um, and they've got some pretty short wires here. Um, to the reverse unit, which means uh, something I intended to, to think would be a simple removal is uh, not going to be quite so simple. Um, but uh, I'll see if I can maybe do the inspection I wanted to do um, by just um, flipping this upside down. Uh, no, that's not going to, it's not going to help us. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do then is grab a set of pliers um, and, and the purpose for doing this is I want there are some things called fingers that uh, are part of the reversing loop uh, unit and in here is a drum and this drum rotates every time uh, you apply power and then release the power um, that this drum rotates and it spins uh, as it rotates these fingers apply power or pick up power uh, in such a way that it causes the engine to either go forward in reverse or there's a neutral setting between the two. So um, these fingers over time can get pits in them or holes and those holes again will impede the ability for electricity to flow flow very well through them which means uh, the engine doesn't run very well or as, as uh, with as much power as it should. Now what's interesting about these metal tabs that you see me slowly gently twisting into the straightaway position is um, they are fragile so you want to be careful you don't want to you know be too strong with your twist um, because you can break them off and then you've got a whole new set of problems uh, if that happens now that I've got these loose what I'm going to do is take my screwdriver and gently pry behind on each side and the reason you want to try to pry on each side is because if you're lucky enough to get this off squarely, and by get this off, I mean this finger assembly, um, then you have the chance of putting it back on again if the fingers are indeed in good shape. As I look at these, um, I'm not sure how good this comes through. Turn on another light here. Um, I don't know if, if you can see this, but uh, this one actually has a hole in it. 
and that one is pretty thin. Um, so the choice is to either put a little dab of solder in here and fill that hole in, and uh, in theory be good as new, or replace it. Um, I oftentimes have come back to the point of saying, let's just replace them instead of messing with them. Um, but one of the concerns that I have is some of the fingers that I've gotten of late are not a very good quality. And so these, these pieces actually will, will move back and forth after they're installed uh, because they're just so poorly designed, poorly made. So on this particular engine, I'm actually thinking about repairing this finger instead of replacing it, which goes completely contrary to everything you've heard me say in the past. Um, so I uh, thought a little bit of explanation would be worthwhile there. All right, so here's the second set of fingers on what I would call the top. Again, I'm trying to be very careful not to torque um, this so it doesn't snap on me. They do snap easily, way too easily. <laughs> okay, so here's our second one. And uh, these fingers actually are intact, although, wow, that is really... The metal is worn really thin. Um, hmm. I was going to get out. Um, I'm getting these out kind of as a comparison. Um, again, this is a instructional elementary style kind of video. So for those of you that are familiar with doing these repairs, I apologize. But uh, uh, for someone who's newer to this, you'll notice that these fingers are spaced uh, differently um, and, and it's important that you pay attention to that because when you put them put things back together obviously you want to get the right one in the right place um, so in our example here this is the one that was on top and you can see how the fingers are offset so this is this would be the replacement for that and so on and so forth um, it's worth noting how um, the new ones are wider so that's that's a good thing. Um, material is a little bit thicker, also a good thing. Um, so anyhow, um, the other thing I like to do when I have the reverse unit apart like this is inspect this barrel. Uh, does it look good? It does look good. Is it dirty? It sure is. So um, what I think I will do is uh, get my Dremel tool fired up here and uh, try to get some surfaces polished. Go ahead and just do a cursory review with a Q-tip and some alcohol um, to just get some of this oil off because there's some extra oil on here first. Um, I also think I'm going to change my plan a little bit here. Uh, I oftentimes have done this as well, and I think I'm going to do this in this case, where um, I will actually spread this part of the reversing unit apart just a little bit so that the drum... Uh, reversing drum drops out and the reason I want to do this is because I can really get to it and polish it up uh, uh, pretty pretty well um, and that's the goal now um, I'm going to change uh, change the bits I have first and go to something that's gonna more of a scotch bright uh, idea and uh, clean this up and again you don't have to have a Dremel tool you can do this uh, 
do this manually if you want, um, but uh, it's really handy if you have one of these. can see how the copper is starting to shine up a little bit and uh, that's that's what I want to do I want to get some of the dirt off of here I'm try not to lose it okay okay now that we've got our barrel um, <clears throat> pretty much free of debris um, I'm gonna switch and again this is something uh, that you can use hand tools to do you don't have to have power tools to um, do this but <clears throat> I want to go to a brass uh, wire wheel and uh, my goal here is to uh, to burnish the copper which means add a add a healthy shine to it If you're using a Dremel tool or some sort of tool like this with a metal wire wheel, you've got to have eye protection because those metal um, fibers fly everywhere. Okay, so now that I've uh, burnished the metal, I'm going to grab um, my alcohol and Q-tip and I'm going to clean the metal again. And what burnishing does is it just provides a very good um, surface for metal uh, for electrical contact. So any any wire or any uh, metal wheels that I have, pickup wheels or whatnot, I try to do this to them. I also find that it helps the um, helps reduce the amount of um, dirt and carbon buildup. It slows it down if they're burnished so you don't have to do this but um, I've I try to try to keep my um, equipment operating very well and I've found that this is a it takes a little bit of time but it's preventative um, and it really does pay dividends So for stars, we're going to put our barrel back in and uh, there are holes on each side of this little plate that it slides into. And once we've got that there, we're going to squeeze it, try to get it back to where it was. Sometimes you need to use um, some pliers to do that. Um, and you want it to move freely, so you don't want to pinch it too tight at the same time open you don't want it popping out so looks like we've got a good balance there all right This section of the video is one that I've uh, worked on and debated on what to do 
that would be most helpful to those of you that are just beginning to work on American Flyer. The skinny is, or the nutshell is, the E-units, aka reversing units, can be incredibly finicky um, and challenging and uh, character building, whatever words you want to use. They, they take a lot of patience. And uh, for example, in this particular case, what has happened is after going through the process of trying to replace the original fingers, having one of them break, I went ahead and replaced the original fingers with brand new fingers. Well, um, you have to adjust the fingers so that they make contact with the drum. So after installing everything, um, I was not seeing the drum rotate very well, and so the solution was let's remove some of the tension off the fingers. Well, in doing that, even though I was barely adjusting the, the tension on the fingers, uh, suddenly they weren't making enough contact. And so that the only way to then get them bent back towards the drum was to remove them, press them down, and then go ahead and put them back in, in place. Well, for a couple reasons, I had to do that at several different times with one of the sets of fingers. And then with all the moving around, one of the solder joints, which you're seeing me work on right now, broke, came loose. And uh, that wire just would not take solder. It was <laughs> solder resistant. Anyhow, it just uh, goes to show that if you're going to get into what I would consider more of a heavy repair of an engine uh, that involves messing with the E-unit, just be prepared. Uh, if you mess with it long enough, it will eventually work out. But again, you have to exercise patience because if you get frustrated and you start to get too aggressive with it, you can break off the metal tabs, you can break the fingers, you name it, all kinds of things can go wrong. Um, I sped this section of the video up because in essence, this actually ended up taking me probably close to an hour of messing around. And bear in mind, I've done a lot of these, I know what's going on, I know what needs to be done, and yet it still was difficult to get this thing to work right. So um, I don't want to scare anyone off, I just want to say this is a caution, so be aware. If you delve into the E unit, have lots of patience in your back pocket. Enough said. Okay, so now that we have successfully refurbished reverse unit, now we want to reattach that back onto frame. So I don't know if you recall, but the wires were over the reverse unit, so I'm trying to put those back. Well, once they came, Thanks once again for tuning in today. I hope you found this video helpful at maintaining a reverse unit. And please don't forget, there are more videos to follow and each one of these is intended to be followed sequentially as you service each component of your steam engine. Until next time, please enjoy your flyer trains, the hobby. Take care. God bless. We'll see you.